Lee, it's great to have you in the studio, not least because I've heard you on the radio so much over the years. Well, thank you for inviting me. And I must... OK, I'll 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 confess. So I grew up with parents who ran a small business and late payment was the absolute bane of our lives. Tiny little building company of two or three people in a van, subcontracting off big building companies... And late payment was just endemic. We almost lost our house several times. And you all know, I know you've campaigned on this as a journalist. You've talked about it as a journalist. Absolutely. It's great you're trying to do this on the national stage. How mad am I? (laughs) (laughs) It's a big job. Uh, It's a four-year rule. So there's a lot to be done. But it's really interesting that you should say that because I do remember going on air uh, in a different, uh, obviously with a different broadcaster, very early... <laughs> Other one, broadcasters are available. They are. Uh, very early one morning, mm. uh, on a programme that still runs very early one yeah. morning, and we were talking then, 30 years ago, yeah. about late yeah. payments. Um, and I think the first thing I would say is I've realised, since I took the job in July, we're not talking about late payments all of the time, as in overdue invoices, Quite often we're also talking about long extended payment Mm. terms. And gamesmanship. Ah, well. You know, oh, we'll pay you 80 pence in the pound, we'll give you four-fifths of what we owe you if you sign this bit of paper that we don't owe you anything else, or we might pay you 100% in six months' time. You're running a small business, cash flow. There's some of that. There is some of that, that. definitely. There's some of that conspiracy going on in order to make your your books look well, yeah. look good. Um, but there's quite a lot of incompetence and there's quite a lot of lack of updating of processes. You know, so what we're finding is in the middle, there's a whole tranche of businesses that simply have outdated processes. No investment has gone in and it actually takes them longer than 30 days to pay you, mm. believe it or not. But the pandemic has shown that there are an awful lot of companies that realised they needed to pay the small suppliers faster and they did it. They cracked it. They really got on with it. We've seen payments shrink in some big companies to seven days even, yeah. 15 days, seven days. Yeah. So it can be done if you put the investment into doing it. It's that lots of other companies, for them, it's not a priority. They've got conflicting priorities in what they spend their money on and they don't invest in the payment systems. And that's really difficult for small businesses. And at the other end, there's the small business that simply says, OK, I'm so excited and I've done this. I've yeah. been freelance most of my working yeah. life yeah. and I have been so excited about a piece of work that yeah. I've said... OK, I'll take it mm. without asking, when are you going to pay me? Yeah, and right. it is the most basic, fundamental question. When is the money going to hit my bank account? A few years ago, for yet another broadcaster, I made a documentary about Carillion, which, of course, went bust, owing tens of billion, tens of millions of pounds to small businesses. Uh, and the, the late payment practices I found at Carillion, it was, it was... I mean, their standard payment was 90 days. Three months! To get your money, their standard payment was 90 days. But Liam, and I came across many, many suppliers who were waiting much, longer. much longer, longer. And Carillion was saying, they were saying, oh, we'll give you, we'll give you half of it, we'll give you two-thirds of it, and then you can you know, go away uh, and never come back. But Absolutely what, outrageous. But what we find is that quite often a small business will have agreed to standard payments, standard mm. terms, mm. and not asked what it is. Mm. And then they expect to be paid in 30 days and they think the payment's late Mm. when in actual fact they've signed a piece of paper that said standard terms. And You're talking about 90 days. I've seen 120 days. I'm hearing about 150 days. And somebody the other day told me about 360 days. A year to get your money. That's a year. I mean, that's not incompetence. That's just deep cynicism, right? That's just cynical. You ask yourself, is that an ethical company? Do I want to do business with them? You You have to be brave. Have you have to be brave enough to walk away because the chances are you're going to be bust before you get paid. So we, we have to tackle this from both ends. We have to say to the small businesses, you're going to have to not work for those bad payers. And this is happening apparently across the manufacturing sector. The manufacturers, the big companies, are finding it difficult to get the skills because mm. these freelancers, the sole traders, the micro businesses are the talent that drives the business success. So they got a bit more power. So they, so they really want to work with you. And if you say, I'm not working with you because you don't pay on time, I'm going to work with that company, your rival, because they pay faster, that will start to change things. And we need investors and pension funds and um, you know anybody else who might want to work for a company to say, 
I want to know how fairly you're treating your small suppliers. Back in the day when you, you and I were growing up and getting interested in politics and policy and all the rest of it, you know, Michael Heseltine, who was business secretary at the time, president of the Board of Trade, it was called then, do you remember that? He said, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but he knew what he was doing, that late payment is recognised business practice. It's what the big guys do to squeeze the small guys, to stop them rising up, to stop them rivalling them. What can you do and if you're a small business and you're owed proper money? What do you do? Do you go to the press? Do you keep knocking on the door of the owner? This sends people around the bend. Yes, it does. And you come to me. You come to, I've got a casework team that are absolutely dedicated to getting your money back. If you're a small Maybe business got plenty of them. with fewer than 50, <laughs> well, interesting you should say that because <laughs> we find it really difficult to get small businesses to come along mm. and let somebody else intervene. Mm. What they do come along and ask is, how do I resolve this? Mm. So they will come and look at the website, find the interest rate calculator, because you can charge interest, find out how to charge compensation, and quite often that is enough to shift the dial and get the big business to pay. But the case workers are absolutely dedicated. They will do everything they possibly can to keep the business relationship between you and that customer, as well as get your money back. Because that's the thing that most people are really worried about, damaging that working relationship. They want the next piece of, of course. work that's coming down the pipeline. Do we need a, a change in the law? Do we need more than just well-intentioned and it obviously very highly informed. I am well intentioned. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm a huge <laughs> admirer of, of your journalism and many of our viewers and listeners will be as well. They'll hear your voice and they'll say, yeah, I know this person. And it, I actually think, I'm not just saying this, I think it's great that the government have appointed someone like you with such a track record in standing up for consumers, small businesses and so on. But what do we really need to happen? We need, uh, we need boards of big companies to say... What, how well are we treating our small suppliers? We want to know what our own payment practices are in this firm. Mm. And a lot of boards and chairs say to me, that's an operational issue. We don't ask mm. those questions. No, it's not. Mm. It's about your company. It's about the practices. It's about the ethics. We need that to happen because it's part of governance. It's part of social and levelling up. It's part of reaching net zero. It's really important. And we need audit of payment practices. We also know, and we're almost out of time, but I have to mention that a lot of contractors, a lot of small businesses watching this, listening to this will say, one of the worst late payers is the state, is the government. Um, you may say that. Things have improved vastly across government. And when we look at the data, we can see that we need to shift some of the private sector to being as good payers as government, we do know that there are still problems. There's mm. lots of work to be done. That's the cabinet officer's job. Um, the private sector is my job. And please, 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 if you are listening and you're a big company, you have got to pay, don't delay, because otherwise you'll lose the suppliers. They're the talent that drives your business success. And if you are a small business and you are in trouble, come and talk to us. Liz Barkley, Small Businesses Commissioner, great to have you on the show. Come back and let us know how you're, how you're getting on. Anything. Really good to have you with us.